I want to go over some of the basics of using burette and the proper procedure for doing a acid-base titration. The first thing you want to start off with is start off with a clean burette and then rinse it several times with your titrant. You don't need to fill it all the way up with your titrant. Add 10-15 milliliters, swirl it around, and then also make sure that you pour, you let some of the titrant go out of the tip. It's important to thoroughly flush the stopcock and the tip with your titrant. This is also a very good time to get all the air bubbles out of the tip, and we'll talk about that in just a second. When you do set up your burette on a ring stand, make sure it is very securely attached to the burette clamp, and it's vertical. You don't want it at any angle because you want it to be vertical so that you can get a very good meniscus reading both at the start and at the finish of the titration. Also monitor and watch your uh, burette to make sure that no drops appear at the bottom of the tip. Sometimes if the stopcock is not properly adjusted, it will s drip slightly, which is not good because you'll have uh, tritrum completely, com continually coming out of the tip. Make sure also there are no air bubbles in the tip or down here. By just turning on full blast, you should get rid of most of your air bubbles. If you can't, talk to your teacher and uh, they may be able to help you here. I always put my Erlenmeyer flask on a white surface so it's very easy to see the, uh, the, the color of the indicator. And then I practice using the burette. The proper technique is to kind of grasp the whole stop, stopcock and turn it like this. This goes back to the old days when we had glass stopcocks and glass barrels and they're greased on and they're very easy to pull out. And so we used to do it this way so that we wouldn't pull out the stopcock during the titration. With the new Teflon ones, if you have one of these, it's very securely put on here and it's a little bit easier to do it either way, either this way or this way. Talk to your teacher and ask he or she what their preferred method is going to be doing. When you're looking at the stopcock, make sure it's not too loose and make sure it's not too tight. You want to be able to turn it very easily but not too easily and also be able to get a single drop to be able to come out. That's also very, very important. Practice doing a titration just using water to make sure we get all the air bubbles out there, how to get one drop, how to practice reading the meniscus. Um, these are all things you want to do before you start your actual titration. Also remember when you're doing a titration you don't have to start at zero. You can start at any number and then you're going to have a starting volume and a finishing volume, the difference is going to be the amount that's going to go into your Erlenmeyer and react during the titration. 